Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I'm planting a new shrub in my garden and Russell is playing all over the place, climbing trees. I have noticed uh, quite a few questions come through our page recently about uh, is it still okay to plant this late in the season? We have put together a video uh, earlier this season about fall planting. We'll link it down below um, and it kind of talks a little bit more in detail. But typically in my area, it's safe to plant usually up until the first week or two of November uh, because you want to give them a certain amount of weeks to root in and uh, get acclimated to their spot before the ground freezes really hard. And it's been actually very, very nice here and we have a very nice 10 day forecast coming um, with no freezing temperatures, which is lovely. Um, so I need to go grab the shrub and my supplies and then I'll show you where we're going to put it. So this is it. This is called a proud berry coral berry and it's an absolutely stunning shrub. Look at these berries. Look at how pretty they are. I mean, talk about a fall interest right there. And I did see, um, we'll try to flash a picture on the screen. I saw a picture of one of these that was established with, I mean, it was loaded with berries. It was absolutely gorgeous. So I can't wait till this one looks like that. Um, but even now it's just stunning, but I've had it in my greenhouse just sitting here kind of waiting because I was trying to decide where to put it. So I'm going to grab this and my shovel. Okay, I think I got everything. So this is going in the back formal garden where I really haven't done a whole lot of planting. So I'm excited to get some new stuff back here. And I've got the perfect spot right here. I'm gonna set this down and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that this is gonna be perfect. We've got a juniper right here. There is a rose bush on this side that blooms a really pretty soft yellow. And then there are daylilies kind of in the back and in the front, which is perfect because they won't impede each other's growth. These stay, you know, lower and this one will grow a little higher. And then we've got lamium right here. So I think it's just gonna be a really pretty blend of plants. So the proud berry grows about three to four feet tall and wide, which is perfect because this flower bed has about four feet span this way. And I think we've got even more than four foot gap here where it can just fill in and be beautiful. And this spot gets a really good block of sun. So this plant prefers part to full sun. Uh, the more sun, the better, because it will produce more flowers and more berries, the more sun it gets. So we're morning now, but it gets a really good block of afternoon sun. And this plant blooms on new wood. So the blooms come out usually like mid to late summer, and they're really pretty. They're like a whitish pink, kind of a bell shape, and then they're followed by the fruit here. So really pretty fall interest. The birds love them. They are not edible for us, but the birds like to eat them like mid to late winter. So they hold on and stay on these branches well into the winter. And another really interesting thing I just learned about this plant is that they actually recommend that in the spring when you start seeing new growth that you cut the entire plant down to about 12 inches and remove any dead wood. That way it can flush back fresh and you get fresh, beautiful new growth. And since it blooms and fruits on new wood, then you get a consistent set of those every single year. So I'm gonna try that this next spring and see what the results are. This is also a zone three through seven. I garden in a zone five, so I know it's plenty winter hardy enough to make it through our winters. So now I'm just gonna weed this area. You can see I've got like around the daylilies, there's some weedy grass and stuff like that. I'm gonna clean that out and then get this thing in the ground. We'll see how it looks. So I got all the weeds pulled and then Aaron came and dug the hole. I'm not really cleaning up the leaves very well this time of year because right above me there's a huge tree full of leaves and it's just dropping every day. So I'm just kind of like letting it go until they're all down on the ground, then I'll clean them up. So all I need to do now then is just pop this in the ground. Should come out of the container pretty easy. Yep. Root system looks really nice. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tease because it does look like the roots are kind of circling a little bit toward the bottom. So just a little, little bit goes a long way. Okay, and in the hole it goes. <laughs> Russell's totally interested in what's going on out here. We just had to save him from a tree though. He climbed way high. If you can get in close on this, you can see that the root ball of the new plant is right at current soil level. I mean, just perfect. You don't wanna dig the hole very much deeper, and you always wanna make sure that you dig it about twice as wide as the root ball. So you can see how much space there is around this root ball. And that's how it was all the way around before I started packing dirt into it. And then you can see right here, this is the drip tubing that's in this area. So there's a drip tube here and there's also a drip tube 
that runs toward the back of the plant. So it should be getting sufficient irrigation. So now I'm going to pack in the soil around the rest of the root ball. I can hear Russell meowing in the distance. Got to go find him. He hasn't been outside since he got to our house ever. And we're just trying to introduce him. He gets to sleep inside at night and whenever he wants during the day. But we like him to be out here with us when we're working. You are not that high up, kitty. You're fine. Come on, you can make it down here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, come on, kitty. Come on, Russell. Oh. Come on, kitty. He's so distracting out here to me. I don't get near as much done. So now I'm just gonna put all this extra soil. I always end up with a little pile of extra soil after I'm done planting. I'm gonna put it in this can and then I'm gonna go find somewhere where I can spread it. I'm really excited to have this one planted in my garden, not only because of the really pretty and unusual pink berries, but because they can tolerate all kinds of different soil situations, which if you guys have been watching our videos for very long, you know that I deal with really high pH, so really high alkaline soil. Um, which can be tough on some plants. So planting things that can handle that is really, really nice. Um, I'm also excited to try cutting this thing down in next spring. So cutting it all the way down to a foot tall, seeing how it comes back, how it flushes. Um, and also the tag says it's deer resistant. So for those of you who deal with deer eating your plants, this is probably a good choice for you. I can't vouch for that personally because I don't deal with deer in my garden. Um, I deal mostly with gophers. That's my main, my main nuisance in my garden. Um, but nothing else. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this plant go in and we will be updating you on it in the future. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.